In the last video, um, we paid a visit to the dwarves and we interacted with them, but we couldn't quite make our conversation stick because the outcomes of the conversation didn't propagate to the map. So those have since been implemented. So let's pay the dwarves another visit in a new game. Uh, okay, and turn and let's have the conversation again where we offer an alliance. Um, they give us a quest, we complete the quest and they agree to be our allies. And now the barracks become ours and we lose one arc because we gave it to the dwarves as a gift to keep them warm. Alright, so let's look at the implementation. Um, every time we click on a conversation option, this function is invoked uh, with a parameter which tells us which statement was actually selected, uh, or at least the number of the statements. So we figure out the actual statement here. Um, so that tells us what option the player chose. Uh, and then we have a function uh, that actions the outcome of that. Uh, which goes beyond the chat itself. It's uh, what's actually applied to the map, uh, which we'll look at shortly. Um, after that's action, we continue the conversation, so we find uh, the next statement by the, by the neutral party, by the dwarf barracks in this case, um, and then we action the outcome from that. Um, and only then is the chat selection uh, actually over and the next set of options is displayed on the screen. Alright, so how do we action the outcome from a player statement? So that's over here. Uh, so currently we have two possible outcomes that have been implemented. Uh, of course a lot more could happen in principle, um, which I still need to implement, but this is sufficient for the current conversation options. Alright, so one possible outcome is that there's a gift. So a player makes a statement as, as a part of a statement gives a gift to the, to the neutral party. Uh, so that's what happens when uh, we complete the quest uh, by giving the dwarves uh, lightning in our case. Um, all right, so if we go to the interaction and we go to the quest, so there's a few options here. So they ask for help and there's a few things we can do. Uh, the one we selected was the lightning uh, option so that's where we gave them the gift of lightning. Um, you'll see over here the there's a lightning outcome and there are two parts to it. One is that the quest is completed, um, which is what happens because we, we gave dwarves something to keep them warm, as they asked. Uh, but there's a second outcome, which is a gift of a lightning trait, uh, basically one lightning trait. Now that has to come from somewhere. So it comes from the player's army that's involved in the chat. Um, so, if we come across this, the player statement that has an outcome of a gift, um, then what we do is uh, we remove, um, well, this is specifically a gift trait, uh, we remove a unit um, with that trait from the army. Um, so that completes that part, and then there's a second outcome. Uh, or possible outcome, which is a battle, which we haven't uh, looked at yet. I will look at that in the next video. Um, but essentially, if instead of uh, choosing the alliance option, um, we end up uh, using, let's say, the attack option, which is always available, the outcome of that will be a battle. And then we, would, we will action that by starting a battle, and that's, that's a whole separate sort of uh, presentation. Um, all right, and then the outcome from the NPC statement works along similar lines. So that we look at essentially uh, the, the NPC statement that's selected, um, and we check whether the outcome from that is an alliance. And if it is, then uh, we basically change the player from the map structure that's involved in the chat to the player of the army. So essentially, the army uh, who con the player who controls the army. Uh, ends up controlling the, the neutral structure that's involved in the chat as well. Um, and that's how all of these options are implemented.